Greetings to you. Thanks for joining us on the show, the Sunday edition. That is Amiemi Adebayo. And it feels good to be here uh, to talk sports, especially uh, with what's going on in New Zealand and Australia. Talking about the FIFA Women's World Cup, there's a lot to uh, talk about. And let me just quickly pause a little and uh, bring in Ken uh, Otonogo, who is also raring to go. Greetings to you, Ken. Um, it's good to do this together one more time. Let me unmute. I'll just unmute it. <laughs> can, can. Uh, all right. Um, I, I'll, I'll say that again. If can appears, you, Ken is just settling yes. in. So let's just uh, move on on the Do show. That we'll, bring, I'm, I'm, I'm unmuted. we'll bring Ken okay. in. All right. So uh, that's it. Uh, let me quickly introduce uh, my partner in the studio while Ken is uh, ready to uh, join us. Tio Agbolaho is here and he joins us. Greetings to you. I don't know when last I saw you. Uh, last time you were here, we're together. Okay. <laughs> it was been a while now. Good, uh, good afternoon. It's good to be here again. Uh, the Women's World Cup, interesting stuff going on. The United States trying to launch their bid for uh, a record third uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, trophy. And of course, uh, our game against uh, Canada. Now this is uh, heroics from the penalty spots. I, it, I was really, really happy. Like. Mm -hmm. 190 goals, and then you just go up there and you stop that. I was really, really impressed. It's been an impressive World Cup so far, impressive tournament. FIFA really done well with this one. Yeah, FIFA's really done well with yeah. this one. I uh, will look at Africa. While we rejoice with what has happened to the Super Falcons, yeah. we probably can't say the same for our African sisters, the Zambians, um, this, early this morning, South Africa as well. So we'll talk about all those games. Uh, again, let me, let me see if I can bring Ken in now as we do this together. Uh, once again, Ken, greetings to you. Uh, feels good to uh, go on this ride together again. Uh, Yami, yeah, how are you? I'm very fine. <laughs> Uh, at least I, I, I was, I, you know, I had to unmute so that you can yeah. hear me. I muted, I muted it earlier on uh, to avoid all the, all the filters from in here. Uh, uh, like you said, it is the women World Cup. When it is the men's World Cup, we devote all the times to it. So it is our women World Cup. Uh, uh, our female national team have been more successful than the, uh, than the than the male team. We all we all know that. Uh, but then it's a different ball game when it gets to this particular level because you know moving on to the next stage has always been difficult. We are among uh, um, the few countries, you know, uh, U.S., Norway, and others who have you know uh, Brazil who have uh, attended all the World Cup since inception in 1991. But then we're talking about the present. Uh, uh, the Super Falcons, you know, uh, are rated 40th in the world to come the top project side Canada. Uh, of course, it is the result that matters. We were able to, you know, pick uh, a valuable point from that game. Uh, uh, probably, uh, of course, the whole team, but you might, you, you might, uh, you won't stop by singling out the goalkeeper for her human's job of saving that crucial penalty. Because if that had gone in, probably Africa would have all been empty handed. So the lone point that, you know, that's for Africa now, because three African teams have played now apart from morocco uh we saw the japanese team the japanese team are no push over their, their world they, 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 they won this before they've been to two they've been, they were in consecutive finals you understand so uh uh, uh that the, the zambians lost is something you know that that five zero loss uh it was as it was expected the zambian team is a good team that experienced their first world cup they have to get you know how to get it better and then uh unfortunately we saw the, we saw uh um the south african team my kid minute goal my God, 98 minutes. <laughs> you know, we're all saying, yes, yes, this is another draw for Africa. And then, you know, uh, they got that, the, the corner came in and they considered it was heart wrenching, heart breaking. But I would they pick themselves up. Uh, we've seen teams in the in the, uh, the middle World Cup losing their first matches and go on to win. I'm not saying that, you know, they, are, they, they have they start a chance, but nothing is impossible. Leicester did win the league. Uh, uh, like somebody also pointed out to me, Greece did win the Euro, Euro Championship. And then, so the Zambian nation also. So it's a powerhouse, like you said, and let's see what is going to happen. Uh, CC, CC is not there. I mean, she is still representing us. Uh, probably from tomorrow, I uh, will be getting feedback live from Australia, uh, from Melbourne, from Brisbane, and that is how it is. But today, let's go on with the show, Yemi. All right, today, let's go on uh, with the show. And just like Ken said, uh, hopefully, uh, Cecilia will be ready and be filling us in. Um, we have to send someone down uh, so to giving us inputs all over um, the tournament. All right, to catch our breath on the show, let's uh, start with what happened yesterday before we come back to today. Then we go back to Friday when the girls got that result. We can't do this show without talking about the Super Falcons. But first, let's look at 
those teams, a lot of people expected things from, the United States and England. Let's allow you to enjoy this report put together by our producer, Jum Nodio Conta. What happened yesterday, we'll come back for more on Sports Tonight. On Sports England Tonight. battled to a narrow win over a debutante Haiti in their opening match of the Women's World Cup in Brisbane, Australia. Georgia Stanway's penalty gave England victory despite an underwhelming performance by the European champions. Credit to them. They put up a good, good fight um, and I think they'll cause problems within our group. Um, but yeah, focus back to us. Um, you can see the style of football that we want to play. We created, um, we got balls in the box, we had some shots off, um, keeper made some good saves um, and yeah, just happy that the ball got into the net. We created chances again. Uh, but we also had moments that we lost the ball um, a little quicker and then they were um, they were really quick in their counter-attack. So that was, uh, that was pretty hard for us. Defending champions, the United States were far more comfortable as they easily dispatched first-timers Vietnam 3-0 in their opening game in Auckland. Sophia Smith scored twice and set up another to steal the show on her debut. I feel good. I think... It was a good starting point for our team in this tournament. I also know that we have a lot, you know, more that we can give, a lot more to do, little things to work on. All right. Um, did I just hear myself say sports tonight? China Sports Sunday. <laughs> That's what you're watching. All right, let's move on uh, on the show. Uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot to talk about. There's also uh, Toby Amushan, the stories surrounding our uh, uh, indie news. And of, of course, trust us, at some point, we will probably have to push the football outside and talk about Toby Amushan because that's what's on everyone's uh, lips. And um, maybe we'll just do that. We have somebody waiting. I uh, want to uh, get in uh, the conversation. Uh, and so uh, I'll, I'll just make that switch. We'll get back to football. Let's get uh, this uh, off our chest, uh, especially because um, our guest is somebody who's very busy. And of course, just uh, not to just keep him on, uh, let's uh, bring him on the show. All right. Uh, greetings to you, Mr. Dari It uh, needs little or no introduction, <laughs> veteran uh, sports wow. journalist, and um, of course, uh, someone to reckon with. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. And always had a great Arsenal supporter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, sir. All right, uh, let, let's just dive straight. I, I don't even know where to start. A lot of us are still, uh, and by the way, Ken, Ken is with us, and he, he will uh, be, uh, of course, throwing in a few questions here and there. But, uh, <laughs> but, but from me here, how, how did oh. you take the, the whole story? <laughs> When it broke, how, how did you take it? I mean, what was your immediate reaction? Um, I must confess, I already had an inkling of it about uh, three weeks before. I think it was before the Lausanne Diamond League when I got wind of um, the fact that they are still uh, top test. I mean, the third word about test, don't, don't let me use the word fit so that people would not think that uh, she has ingested uh, prohibited substances. She has filled the third word about tests. So I got wind of that. So I think there was a back and forth between her and, and the AIU. Uh, obviously, at that stage, they did it by an explanation. So they had to come up with a charge. So I wasn't surprised. I was, I was thinking maybe she would get the right explanation. And the right explanation would be probably that the woman that was supposed to test her didn't do enough to locate her. Because it's a no-notice test. So the person that has been sent to come and test her must do everything humanly possible to locate her. Because those that have escaped, like Gabby Thomas, for example, she was able to say that the woman didn't, well, I don't know whether it was a woman in her own case, but the tester, so let me let me let me let me be saying with that. The tester didn't do enough to locate her. And that has been the, you know, the excuse most of them have been given anyway. But she was able to support that with some evidence. People have, who saw her there and the rest and the rest and the rest of that. So I don't know the evidence to be will have, but I believe as a top athlete, she should be prepared always. But the fact that it's a no notice, you can't live your life in fear because you don't know when they will come. So you can't say because you don't know when this guy uh, will come, you will not attend parties in your own house because you have to be in that house in the first place. Because the, 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 the form you have sent to them, the form you have signed, they update it every three, three months, but you cannot do it within that three months if you are leaving a location to another place. 
you quickly is an app. You quickly go there. I'm leaving Lagos. I'm going to Abuja. I will sleep in Abuja. If you are coming back to Lagos, because what is important is that where you sleep that night, it is very important. Most of the time, if you are not training, they come in the night or early in the morning, and it's a one-hour window. Within that one hour, they must do everything possible. It's not as if they have 24 hours to wait for you. So they and the artists are already aware of that hour. What they are not aware of is when the tester will come, because they call it a no notice. So you can't live your your life in fear. So maybe what Toby should have done is to get somebody either who will constantly update a whereabouts form or let her know that, hey, you can't go to this place. So this, these people might come at this time. Yeah. But I don't know the excuse that she has, so I can't really be talking about uh, what led to her, to her, yeah. to her, to her missing the be test. Before I allow Ken to come on, I'm very sure the, 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 the viewers and a lot of our fans listening to you explain some of these things. The, the follow-up question will be, you, you've already mentioned an athlete that similar scenario. Is, is there a coming back from this? Is there a, an explanation that can, you know, be, be, be acceptable uh, for, I mean, three times? One mistake, two coincidence, but three. You know, is, is there any explanation, you know, in, that, you know, the athletics uh, integrity unit will, will say, okay, we made a mistake? If there was one for Gabby Thomas, then there can be one for Toby Amuso. Okay. Gabby was also charged like Toby Amuso in 2020, I think. And Gabby was able to prove that one of those missed tests, the tester did not do enough to locate, to locate her. So to answer your question, yes, there's an escape route. But we don't know this, the story that Toby will tell, so we, don't, we can't really hazard any guess. Okay, uh, let, let me allow Ken, uh, probably has a question or two, uh, to throw in as well. Because at least I'm following the trend of, of questions that uh, your mister is, you know, is throwing at you and your response is so far. Um, as a top athlete, don't you think that probably uh, Toby needs uh, a, 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 a management team, you know, and then maybe somebody that will, like you, you know, somebody that will be managing her and manage this aspect of uh, uh, your, your, your your and what that when they want to come to your test and that thing should be managed by a professional instead of by the athlete herself. Um, I think you are right, but. That means we are already looking at the fact that Toby wasn't available. What if Toby was in, that, in the house that day? And maybe there was a problem with the ringer. Maybe there was a problem with her phone. You know, like I said, it's a no notice. Maybe she was sleeping at that time. Like I said earlier, she cannot live a life in fear. So she could be sleeping at that time. That's why I said it is the tester that must do everything humanly possible to make sure that she contacts or she, she, she contacts the athlete. So in this case, I don't know whether Toby wasn't available. Maybe she wasn't able to update her whereabouts form. If that is the case, then the need for a manager, I think is even more than, more than necessary. But if she was available, like Gabby Thomas was available where she said she would be, and the tester did not do enough to locate her, then the issue of having a manager does not arise. Because what that means is that she has filled the location where she said she would be at that particular point in time, and she was there. So we can't really say, it's only Toby that can say that, yes, I was there, but this woman did not do enough. Maybe make a telephone call. I don't know if there was a telephone call, but I've spoken to a few people who, are, who conduct this test, and they told me that the last 10 minutes of the one hour window is used for telephone calls. But from what I heard, I don't know if it's correct, but that's what I heard, that the woman did not make the necessary telephone calls. Some people were saying it's optional, but in this kind of case, I don't think telephone calls should be optional. Text messages should be optional, because it is your duty to make sure that you let the athlete know that you are around when you come, not when you are coming. It is when you come that the athletes will be known that you are around. And like I said earlier, you cannot live your life in fear. That you cannot do this, you cannot do that, because you are expecting 
somebody to come at any time to come and test you. That is, that is, 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 is it not the reason why uh, uh, the, I, I, I have tell you that it has to be three? We're not talking about one missed test here. We're talking about three. If you have missed one, you have missed two, you have missed three. So the, I mean, if, if, if you're talking about it, it's just an optional thing. Probably it was okay, fine. To be you know, whichever athlete you missed one. Because then before they can do the, before they can get to you and write you, you would have missed three tests. Don't you think because of that, somebody need to organize her itinerary or any other top athlete that we're having? We, we look at the, the blessed talk about it is happening to us all the time that we have top athletes at the top and something will come in. But of course. She has not, she's charged for missing the drug test, not for failing the drug test. So at least that must be emphasized here. But don't miss what you understand. The divine, divine is there. We don't know who had the case of divine. Blessing has been banned. And here we are again while we are celebrating. And then, I mean, something just like pouring uh, uh, ice water on Nigerians, on, you know, on our celebrated athletes. To so avoid this. In order, I'm not about living your life in fear. That is that is the rule. But as they say they give you three wins. Uh, don't miss three. If you miss one, it is considered no. But doctor, you miss two. But when you miss three, I mean, did the three people also not make the full calls? I'm not saying this. I'm only saying that you know, in order to avoid it, you want to need a professional to handle your calls, to handle your to remind you and to do all these things. Of course, you have said it. No, I agree with you. I agree with you. <clears throat> I think. I don't, I'm not saying this is what happened, but I think Toby didn't realize that her status has changed. She's the world champion. And she's not only the world champion, she's the world record holder. So if they are going to test you 10 times before, they will double it. Yeah. That is normal. And the moment you miss that first test, you're already a target. Because in the highest of world athletics, you are hiding something. And that is the same thing that happened to Blessing. Blessing actually failed the test, a word about test, before she even tested positive for, for the ingested prohibited substances. So I quite agree 100% with you. Toby should have known that her status has changed. For example, when she came to Nigeria, she was all over. She was all over the place in Nigeria. And at that point, a manager should be constantly reminding her, as you check your word about, because even if you are the, with the president, and you do update your, that's the president of Nigeria now, yeah, and you yeah. do not update your word about form, it is assumed that you have missed the test. So you must always. So when she was in Nigeria, we all saw it. She was from one place to another endorsement. Fantastic. But the management thing that she put up, they are only from the business side of it. You should have maybe probably an ex-athlete to be your personal manager that understands this thing. This is not the first time they will be testing her. Last year, they tested her. But I'm sure the number of tests she underwent last year is different from the, from the one this year. Because up until, up until July 22nd or whereabout, um, thereabout, she wasn't a world champion. She was not a world medalist. She was not an Olympic medalist. She was only a Commonwealth medalist, maybe an African champion. So she hasn't got into that level, although she has been showing, showing signs signs that uh, I think I can make it. But the moment you become a world champion, your status has changed. You become a, you Everything become a target. Is more yeah. professional. So I think she must be paying the price for that. Okay, uh, uh, looking forward, what are the bright, what have been the bright side? Because uh, you are Mr. Te Athletics, what, are, what, what, what has been the bright side for uh, this? Uh, what, are the, what have been the challenges so far in the, in the, last, in the last few months and looking into the uh, later part of the year? You know, it's unfortunate what, is, what, has, what has happened to Kimi, and I hope she escapes it. And uh, if she escapes it before the World Championship, where they said the, the, the result will be had before the World Championship, and I think she has that mental toughness to go through it, because if, if she knew about this before the Lausanne Diamond League, that was like close to a month ago now, and she was still able to run that fast, I think Nigerians can be rest assured that if she escapes, she can do wonders at the World Championship. And unfortunately, without Toby in that World Championship team, it's going to be tough. Because it's a groomer that has always been supplying us with medals. She's the only one that has won medals in the Ronaldo in the present, uh, uh, how do I put it now? In, in the crop of, crop, of, crop of athletes, yes. 
Yes, after I lose it, 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 she's the only one that has won medals at both levels. So, Nigerians believe SA will get another medal. She has won a bronze, she has won a silver, and we are looking up to her winning the gold. Mm. But the form she's showing now, uh, well, we still have uh, about three weeks of the World Championship. Let's see if something can happen. But she needs to wake up and start jumping 16, 6 9 consistently in training because now there, there, there are little competitions. So that by the time the World Championship comes, maybe she can give, give us that goal. So if you remove Toby, if you remove SA, I don't know where the medals, medals will come from. And two, I don't believe we should be predicating success of any sports, not just athletics now, on what we do globally. It is what we are able to make of it internally. How the, the, that sport can contribute to the GDP, like football is doing now. Whether it is badly run or uh, is run the right way, we have clubs who employ people who are paying salaries. So that means you have been able to employ people and you are contributing to the GDP of the country. But look at other sports. Practically nothing. They are still running athletics as if it's an amateur sport. So if we need to concentrate locally, I mean, use the local front to develop our athletes, make it into a business. It's a professional sport. So let's have clubs that can pay at least allowances and pay salaries, clubs that can get endorsements. But if there are no competitions, because the whole thing is now rests on, on the shoulder of AFN, I think the AFN, we, we have to do more than they are doing now. Okay, uh, before we let you go, um, let me just ask you this. As it stands, is Toby is, is suspended in the next three weeks. Do you think uh, there is any, uh, uh, there might be developments that will make up, you know, be part of the of the World Athletic Championship? It depends on, yeah. on, on, the, on the excuse that she, she's going to give. And unfortunately, I don't know the circumstances that led to her beating, missing those tests. She doesn't have to be the last test. She can puncture the first test. She can puncture the second test. She can puncture the third test. She can punch all three. So it depends. Okay. Uh, all right. So that's why you need a good lawyer that will tell you, yes, that's she means it. You know, the, the good thing about it is not a doping matter per se. Because doping matters yes. can take two, three weeks. It takes a time yeah. uh -huh. So that's why they, they, can, they can confidently say that before the World Championship, the whole matter will be dispensed with. Thank you. Thank you so much, Darren. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, and uh, thanks for having me. And congratulations, you managed to win a position in the last now. Back to you, me. All right. Uh, thank, thank you, Darius, so for uh, all your inputs. We need to go on a break, and uh, when we return from that break, it's going to be back to football. All right, welcome back. Um, uh, let's... Um, go back to football now and talk about uh, the things that have happened today. We started with what happened uh, yesterday. We'll talk about the things happening today. Then we'll go back to Friday to talk about the Super Falcons of Nigeria. Of course, made a lot of people proud with that draw. But first, let's talk about our African sisters now, Bariana, uh, Bariana Ken. You know, as hinted at what happened, it was a whole drama. At some point, we thought the ladies from South Africa were going to leave with a draw, but heartbreak uh, for them. And you're going to see the pictures. Uh, Tio, um, South Africa becoming a force on the African continent, but at the global stage, mm, yeah. they're still not on Nigeria's level. No, no. And they are struggling. But it was a good performance today against a good side. side yes. It has to be said. Yes, you, have to, you really have to give it to them, considering the fact that they actually got the opening goal mm -hmm. as well. You know, uh, uh, you look at the fact that many of these uh, uh, European nations have made, not just even the Europeans, even the, including the Asians as well, mm -hmm. they've made giant strides. A lot of in progress. Women, yeah, women, women football. And you see, you see it in the way they build up their play, they're able to play on their shoulders, and even up to the def defensive play. It's been really, really impressive. I have to give it to the Swedes, who actually uh, had the mental resilience to come back from that uh, uh, goal down and went on to win the game. I felt that uh, the South Africans could have done more to probably ensure that uh, they, they probably get picked, yeah, yeah, they picked up a, a draw at least from that one. But ultimately, it's football. It happens. It's a heartbreak uh, for, the, uh, for, the, for the South Africans. We're looking at hope probably by their next game, they might actually get something from me. But then again, it shows that I think about 10 uh, debutants that have made it to uh, eight. Uh, of eight of them, they always somehow lose games. So I don't think it's unheard of. But how they bounce back for me to tell how much 
how their mental strength actually works. Yeah. All right, how, how the bounce back from this. It, yeah. it's, it's tough to take. It's tough to take. Um, I mean, Ken, you, you talked about it earlier. At some point when we were beginning to think, yeah, and a second African team would get a point from a very strong women's football playing side, it oh. turned out to be heartbreak for Banyana Banyana. In fact, eh, I'm, I'm touching my heart now, Yemi. I'm touching my heart because <laughs> when when they when they had that when they had that corner kick, and uh, you know, of course, Sweden is a superpower. I mean, we played with uh, and then they took they took that thing. My guy, uh, it was it was heart wrenching. Um, but let me just give a live update now. Um, France and Jamaica, they played. They are playing. This is 86 minutes now, and it is still zero zero. Wow. Jamaica is holding on to France. I hope, I hope they will. It took another last minute, last minute plunge, you know, for them. You know, uh, uh, the French team is being coached by Javier Renard, you know, uh, uh, the guy that, um, you know, want to want to uh, uh, have come uh, in Africa. And uh, right now, uh, you know, they I mean, the, the result of that, or the regular the result, the reward for all those who are going to do it outside there is to they, they handed uh, this to This is the first female team she's coaching. And then the France uh, are the Nobel, the Nobel, the Nobel rich, the new powerhouses that have joined the, you know, the established ones, uh, Norwegians, the USA, uh, you know, uh, Germany. So now we're having England, we're having France, we're having Spain, you know, joining that team and Japan, of course. So, but like you said, of, of the African teams, of the, of the, uh, Af African teams that are there, um, South Africa has shown intent. Morocco has shown intent. Yeah. And then uh, uh, all these are telling Nigerians that no way that uh, that we were there before. So basically, I think like you said, uh, let's all see, they've lost their first game, but the way Roku, they have a very good manager, they have some fantastic players, and then if you have that combination with a federation, but they had issues, you remember they, 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 they boycotted their last uh, uh, preparatory match before they left, uh, but then let's hope they put all those behind them and see if they will represent Africa for me, Ghibli. All right. Uh, and see you, moving on, um, another game today, Netherlands, Portugal, two European powerhouses. Yeah. Uh, but the Orange ladies uh, were able to, you know, edge past Portugal. Yeah, uh, yeah I think this is Portugal's debut as well at uh, the World Cup. And obviously, like we talked about before, it's uh, it's not surprising that uh, coming up against the, the Dutch female team, national team, uh, they were always going to struggle. I saw, I saw the beginning of that game. And it was a, lo a lot of back and forth, a lot of back and forth. I was just focused on the jersey and then the way the women were going on mm -hmm. the pitch. I was really, really impressed, if you ask me. But uh, uh, let's see what happens. Probably the Portuguese might bounce back. But then again, you know that this Dutch team, there's just something special about them. And I think they got a deserving victory today. All right. Uh, so that's it. A, a good win uh, for the Dutch uh, in that group. I think it's a group that had the United States. So, yeah. uh, uh, we'll see what happens. It was always going to be the United States and someone, and someone else. else. Yeah. So uh, now the Dutch have put themselves in a good position. And of course, we're not using the group standings today, but if, if indeed you, 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 you use the group standing, they'll be number two. Yeah. Because the United States beat Vietnam by three goals. To three goals. So new, yeah. that puts them on top uh, in that group. All right, let's uh, move on on the show uh, and talk about what happened on Friday. Uh, a lot of people, I mean, at some point, <laughs> I became optimistic. I, I, I wasn't. But when I saw New Zealand neutralize Norway, something told me it, it could be done. Sometimes it's not just about the quality of the players. Sometimes yeah. it's about the tactics. The, the ladies from New Zealand executed the tactics, was spot on. And, I mean, the Norwegians were on their backs start to finish. And so Nigeria came into that game, and everything that could go against us did it. One way or the, the other, other yeah, did it. And <laughs> yeah. even when they got that penalty, penalty yeah, that could have changed the, the game, whole dynamics of the game, yeah. now they uh, showed up, spectacular, standing captain on the day, yes. and the heroics is all we remember. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I, I watched that game. I woke up around 3, 3 a.m., and I started watching that game, and at the point, my heart was in my mouth. 
because I, I, I saw the way the Canadians, like this, like this lady on the left flank that was just bombing down the flanks, you know, and then to a large extent, you could see our, 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 our players were probably on their toes and they were at a point scared. But I think there was a little tweak by the manager, and then the next thing, it looks like we are getting ourselves, getting into our rhythm. There was one very impressive run from Aziza Oshuala at one point in time, have, yeah, that, you know, yeah. and, 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 and I, I think a, a, a Canadian player had to put her body on the line, you know, for to prevent Nigeria from scoring. And then they go for the break and they come back at halftime and then Sinclair gets uh, we, they, they, that penalty. Or that guy gives away that penalty. Now, my, my heart is in my mouth. Sinclair has 190 goals for Canada, the national team. Even there had no other player has scored that much amount of goals mm -hmm. for any national side. And then she steps up being the captain. And from one captain to another, now do they save that one? Oh my God, I, I'm, where I shouted, that morning, I'm sure my neighbors would have been asking, what's going on? You know, but that was, that, was, that, was, that was how happy I was about that, that save. And then somehow we were able to, you know, go on. We kept at it. Yeah, they threw everything at us towards the end of the game. We even got a red card, but at the end of the day, we were able to stand strong. And I, I think this is our third meeting. We met Canada more times than any other team at this, uh, at this uh, tournament, and they have not beaten us. I think we won one, three, three times we played against tournament, uh, Canada, we won one and drawn two. So uh, although the Canadians, an interview afterwards showed that a lot of their fans saying it felt like a loss for them, but for Nigeria, playing against the current Olympic champions, I think it was a very, very good one for us. Um, let me get, I think I know what Ken wants to say, but <laughs> I, I'll let him say, because I mean, I was excited. A lot of us were. And the moment we got past that 60 minute mark and it was still goalless, goalless yeah. then a lot of us started believing that it could happen. And it did, it happened. We, we, we could have gotten a goal too. Uh, so it, it wasn't as if we sat back all through. Very good, but for once, nobody's talking about Coach Randy Wardrum or whatever, whether it's, it was a good win that a lot of people, I mean, sorry, it's feeling like a win, a draw <laughs> that felt like a win. It was, yeah. It was a good one, and, and that's what everybody's talking about. Uh, yeah, me, of course, uh, sometimes you, you, you mentioned the New Zealand, Norway, uh, the way just are uh, one of the four countries to have won the world, to have won the world cup, only four, uh, Japanese had the, the Germans twice, and then the, uh, the Americans who are going for a three pit now, see if they can add, you know, win, add to the four that have already won. Um, so New Zealand playing Norway, you think it's a uh, well, well, uh, the, the host will be taken to the cleaners. But you know, are, are the force, and that is where the grit. Sometimes it's like when you play uh, a, 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 a derby. You know, four goes off the book. If the people say we die here, you understand? Uh, uh, the, the, the soldiers, the, the, the band, the, the, the bands together, and said we are going for war, and then everybody contributes. I think that was that that was all happening. And then for the for the for the Super Falcons, yes, we were playing uh, the seventh ranked team in the world. That is Canada. You understand? We are ranked 40. We are, we are, we are not in the top 30. So, uh, but they, we also have this thing, this record with Canada. Canada has never beaten Nigeria at the female World Cup. We've, had, we've met twice before. There was a, a, there is a win and a draw for Nigeria. So this is our third meeting. So we have a win and two draws. So Canada has never beaten. So it's like we are the changed team. Uh, the Canadians tried okay. all they can, um, you know, to do whatever they want to do. 62% possession, tried, and also got that, 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 that penalty kick, but it was not to be. That, it is a moral boosting one pointer. So as we go on to play our next game. Let us see what it is going to be because we are facing the host nation, Australia. Uh, uh, and then uh, they will not you know, uh, uh, you know, beat Super, uh, the Super Falcons. I'm saying they will not. I'm not, I'm not there. I've just been hopeful. Yeah, like that. They are ranked tanks in the world. So they are, they are, they are a top 10 team. They are a host team. So they have everything going for them. They have the momentum. They have won their first game. So uh, uh, they want to see how they can, you know, uh, capitalize on this. Because a win over the Super Falcons give them six points. It means they, they are at least they are as good as qualified. So basically, going there and doing that thing is what is what that is what matters of course we still have our last game you know so uh, in the in the team so we, we, we're taking this to a strong teams about against the irish the irish were not a pushover they lost against australia but i watched that game from beginning to the end it was there in the last six minutes of that game the irish had two clear chances that they were put to bed and then the result would have been different the slender was rolling so we are in the top group where every team every point you gain is you know an advantage and pushing you you know uh, to, to, to the next round for the girls 
$30,000 is good. But you me, add a, a $60,000 sound in your ears if they can move into the next round. All right. I, I, I wish I wish, I wish, wish I had a relative uh, uh, in that scene. Uh, but that's sorry for another day. All right. A uh, quick update. Um, Ken told you earlier, so let me just chip this in. Jamaica currently battling France is still goalless. 94 minutes of football played. Uh, for the Jamaicans, uh, they're a lady down, uh, got a red card. Uh, sure. But it looks like, it looks like they might be able to get away uh, with this. Now, on that note, let's bring in uh, our man, um, Jimmy Ogulano. He's here uh, with us now. Found a way to get here in spite of all the hurdles he had to cross. Jimmy. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to be here on set with you, uh, yeah. too, and also Ken over there in London. Um, it's always a pleasure having to see that teams like Jamaica uh, can come good against countries like uh, France. France, especially with the antecedent of France, um, the, the, the domestic, yeah. the domestically what they've been able to do, mm -hmm. and um, you see Jamaica, you know, having to battle is I'm, I'm sure it must have been the real battle, and you see the competitiveness in this particular competition. You are not having teams getting steam the road. Debutants, yes. Yeah, debutants, they are not, seven nobody there. Exactly. Because in 1991, you remember, yeah. that we were just steam Basket road. Load of goals. Even Chinese, uh, Chinese Taiwan, or what's Taipei. the name now, uh, Taipei or so, they defeated us right there in 1991, 2-0. So you can imagine how uh, you know teams have been able to close mm -hmm. the gap. And yeah. I think it's something uh, really good for yeah. female football. All right, uh, something really good for female football. You've missed a, a large part of the discussion, yeah. uh, but maybe we'll talk about it when you're out of the studio. But <laughs> the, the part we can talk about, hopefully, let's see it now, uh, tomorrow's fixtures, tomorrow's fixtures, the things that will happen tomorrow. One of our African sisters also will be in action as the Moroccans. Uh, they'll be up against um, the, the Germans. Probably uh, the strongest thing yes. in Africa. So, uh, fixtures uh, for tomorrow, Italy, Argentina, Germany, Morocco, Brazil, Panama. You, you know what strikes me the most yeah. here? Italy, Argentina, those are powers mm. in, the, in terms mm -hmm. of male okay. football. Yeah. But definitely not in no, terms of definitely female football. Not. <laughs> no, no. So, I mean, thank you, Jimmy, for putting that in context. If you're thinking you're yeah, going to see a blockbuster no, no, because yeah. it's Argentina, no, definitely not. just know that it's the latest. <laughs> but let's pay a thought for Brazil. Mm. In spite of all the talent, in spite of everything, they are yet to win a FIFA Women's yeah. World Cup. Okay. And this is a nation that is richly blessed with footballers. Do you think with the manager that they have now, uh, Pearson Hag, that they, this might just be their tournament? Do you think so? Is that to say, really, um, especially when you consider the fact that someone like Marta had played for Brazil, you wonder how um, exactly did it they happen? Didn't, they didn't uh, you know, France won four times, um, Germany, uh, when Bridget Prince was there doing great things. At this point in time, it's hard to say, really. I personally do not think the Brazilians have got it, but I also think that they'll go far. Um, it, it has very little to do with how fantastic that coach or even the set of players right now. It's, it's more about what they bring on on the field. How exactly do they set up? How exactly, uh, how hungry are they? are they at this point in time? I mean, being a major country uh, when it comes to uh, global football should spur them on. You've seen what the likes of that national team had been able to do what they had done in age grade football. I think they will always have that uh, constant source of motivation and inspiration to go get something. But I, I, I really don't see much um, from them at this point in time. I feel that when you consider what the Americans have been able to do, and also maybe teams, other teams that are coming up, I, I really fancy the chances of the, the Japanese side. Um, the one in 2011, yes, yes, and I actually do feel they are hungry enough to go get something for themselves. All right, uh, Tio, uh, I mean, we, we might have to let you go at some point, but before, now that you're still with us, Morocco, they're, they're beginning to be a force. A, a, a lot of people are, are talking you, are about... You, are, you, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, the beginning? Be, beginning of... They're yeah, already a force. No, no, women's football. football yeah. Women's football. Mm. And all of this is coming off the things they are doing on the administrative side. Yes. Exactly. So do you think they will come good here? Or we might still have to wait? You know, sometimes you put in a lot of work, you might not see it immediately. Yes. Mm. That's why they say they're beginning to become... I mean, w w would you ever think in 10 years, 10 years ago that Moroccans would be... Definitely not. You wouldn't. Exactly. But now, in a game against the Super Falcons, I mean, you want to sit down and watch. It's, you're not going to say that they're going to lose. Definitely. Definitely. So do you think all of those work will come good now? Or we probably might still have to wait. 
Wow. Well, uh, looking at what they've been able to do, look, okay, you talked about Brazil, the Brazilian side, and what the men have been able to achieve as opposed to the yeah. women. It's, it's simple. When you put in the work, you will definitely see the results. Now, you need to understand that, yes, other people are trying to do their own best as well to come and upset mm -hmm. you, but you cannot deny the fact that these ladies coming into this competition, they look like things that can, a team that can actually go all the way and cause one or two upsets along the way. And like you said, it's largely due to the fact that administratively, mm. they've been able to put things in place, as opposed to hey, where we constantly have bickering yeah, and fighting issues, and in-house yeah. issues that we just cannot seem to shake off, especially when a tournament, a major tournament at least is approaching. Uh, uh, we always make reference to wrestling mm. on this program and, and, and how the Nigerian Wrestling Federation somehow have been able to pull themselves out of, of that course, administrative malaise and then Malay, yeah. go on there and you see our wrestlers going out and winning meets and doing impressive stuff out there. So we need to find a way to shake that off and then maybe by doing so, improving the, the, the women's league, push things. You, if, if it's bad at home, you really cannot go out there and yeah, exactly. who are you going to impress? Nobody. So yes, looking at Morocco now, the Falcons not play this side and you come out and say that they are, that, no, you that the favorites. Now you really cannot mm, hit your chest mm, anymore. Mm. So whether they will go far now is dependent on how they now perform on the day. It's a tournament after all. Argentina, Argentina lost their first game on yeah, the last World Cup. Yeah. But then again, it's all up to them. And we can only hope for the best after the African sisters. They, they have this cohesion going for them mm. and also solidity in different departments. And I feel that they would um, want to you know, get themselves inspired by the fact that Zambia, um, you know, maybe it's a friendly, maybe it's um, preparatory, but they defeated Germany. So I don't see any reason why they cannot, you know, get one over um, Germany at this point in time. I think the Moroccans, they got a very fantastic team. If you watch them play, uh, and also the preparations, apart from watching them play at the last uh, WAFCON, you look at the preparations, how they've set up, how they've been playing games, and how serious they've been, especially considering also the fact that administratively they are up there. I think it's something to watch out for. I think the Moroccans should be able to do well. All right, let me go to Ken. Uh, this uh, probably might be his parting shot um, uh, with us as we press further on uh, the show. Uh, Ken, I want to get your thoughts on our African sister, sisters, really, uh, Mo Morocco. Uh, what do you think they will do? Because you talked about it earlier against the Germans. It's going to be very difficult to see. Uh, and, of course, there's also this special shout-out uh, that you probably want to make uh, and the end of this. But, but your thoughts on that and, and, and you know, probably your parting shot as uh, we listen to what you have to say. Uh, you, got, you guys have so, you, you, you summed it up already. Uh, fantastic takes. Uh, Morocco is the maker of football in Africa at all levels, but they started with infrastructure intentionally. Morocco has been bidding to host the World Cup since. 90, when we went, when US 94, you Moro, Morocco yeah, were among the teams that beat it. So close then. Yeah. You, you, so you, you can imagine. So they are, it, it is not a, a, a mistake. It's an intentional thing. It is, you know, a, a well structured, a well planned program that is started with. So where they are today is not by accident. It is not by tomorrow. There is, there is a blueprint that they followed. And that is why today, uh, uh, Morocco has placed in the semi-finals of the World Cup, the first African team to do that. You can count how many nations in the world that has been to uh, the, the, the semi-finals. Because it is just those two teams. Before the year, remember, until 2002, Brazil and Germany had never met at the World Cup because they were always at the other half. And one of them will get there to the semi-final and that is him. But Morocco taking Africa to the world map, Morocco women team, Morocco under 23, Morocco whatever, and hosting Africa in every of that team tells you they are ready. So this is, a, a, you, 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 when you plan, you plan to succeed. So it is success do not come through, uh, uh, our, what, 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 how, do, how do we say it? Babi Magbabi, Babi Magbabi, do this and do that, no. You just have to know where you are going to. And that is what the Moroccans have been doing. Playing against the Germans is going to be tough. The Moroccans play flat football. The Germans have the great. The Germans have won to World Cup. They want to win the third one. I, mean, I think this is one game I would not love to lose. I would like to watch this game and which is going to be entertaining. And I do hope that Morocco makes Africa proud. Uh, uh, so let me just make a, a, a first acknowledge that Jimmy uh, last week here. Jimmy called it. So today, now Jimmy is the new oracle of Channel Sport on Sunday. He called Akaraf that Akaraf will beat Djokovic. So we are acknowledging you, Jimmy, as you know, as uh, uh, yeah. the, 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 the new one. And before yeah. I wish my daughter. Yeah, you are not uh, that if you <laughs> 
It was a double. It was a couple. Hey, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and before I wish my daughter, uh, uh, Kelly Ochenogo, uh, yes. a very, very happy birthday before the world. I just want to say, uh, uh, you guys, I would have loved, I would have loved to, I would have loved to be part of the next part because uh, um, I'm passing short here. It's what you guys probably what you guys you know are going to discuss uh, uh, soon in the next few minutes. Um, in 2016, 2017, Arsene Wenger bid, you know went to bid 85 million for a young player in the world. That young player is Kylian Mbappe. Uh, 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 Wenger has this Cameroonian connection, so the, because of the parents, Wenger was able to go over there. Uh, the Arsenal team, they, note this: they watched Kylian Mbappe 27 times during that period. And then, you know, they went in there, just like what we're having, a, you know, of, of a Haaland, the parents, a kind of, a, a lot of money issues. But it's not just the money issues. What Wenger and Co found out was that when they got into the room of Elian Mbappe, it was littered, flooded, plastered with posters of Real Madrid. He is a diehard Real Madrid fan. Uh, so whatever is happening here in this Kylian Mbappe issue is going to intrigue the world, the power. Will they, will they keep him on the bench? Will they say him he has a contract on the 2024 because the 2025 is an option it was a two-year uh, extension that he did will you go for free uh, 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 PSG saying we are going to recoup 160 million the PSG did sign Lionel Messi they did sign Jimmy Wajina they did sign Sergio, Sergio Ramos they did sign Donaro they signed them all on free transfer is it a chicken coming home to roost Hello, Chanogo. Signing up and dropping my pen. Happy birthday, Kelly Ochenogo. Bless you guys. All right. With the party <laughs> shot, with the party <laughs> shot from Ken, uh, we'll, yeah. we'll go on a quick uh, break. And when we return, I uh, will make a switch. Let's go on that break and we'll come back for more. <laughs> uh, welcome back. Uh, of course, we've made a switch um, because Ken has left us. And um, Tio, uh, also Tio Aguilar, has uh, um, uh, uh, left the studio, and of course, Premier Adela joins us now. Greetings to you, uh, Okwe. Shouldn't be meeting like this, but anyway, uh, <laughs> greetings, <laughs> greetings to you. Uh, thanks for finding out time to um, be with us. Uh, before Ken left us, he set the tone for what we're going to be talking about in the next few minutes. Let's talk about Kylian Mbappe. What do you think will happen? And a lot of people, there are rumors, mm. and I say rumors. Uh, that look, this guy already has something with which, is, which is normal. At some point, it's going to happen. Yeah. So what PSG can do is whether they will make it faster mm. or just wait for him to, to to go. A lot of people seems that he has them by by, by juggler. Yeah, Real Madrid just happens to be the only grade for club football, uh, and I've Simple. not seen any serious person turn down Real Madrid. Uh, Mourinho said it was like a train that passes once in a lifetime, so exactly. he had to go. Uh, uh, Carlos Kuroj uh, left Manchester, the, uh, threw away the opportunity of become the next manager yeah. of Manchester United. I went uh, to Real Madrid. So, it's something you don't turn down. How much more when you're a childhood fan? Mm. So, and again, it should, this was something that should have happened last season. But again, uh, it was more of a country over cash scenario. Uh, the president, uh, President Macron, now to call him and say, look, you are still... Uh, Maybe because of what they Stay said. In the first league. Yeah, exactly. Also, yeah. also their bilateral relationship with Qatar, <laughs> defense for Hoy. Do you understand? So he, he was just the pawn. But I think uh, with the prospect of a free transfer, and that is what no but no serious no, but no businessman serious or entrepreneur want to yeah. uh, even entertain. Mm. Uh, Mbappe will leave this season. He can't play. Uh, for that's him. a boat call. No, he will I, leave I, this I, season. I, you, you, you just have to look at this. I think uh, going to pay for free next for season. free. You know, you've offered him one billion um, euro for ten years. Yeah, he's not going to stay. And also the loyalty bonus to pay. Also the salary. If you decide to leave him on the bench to rot away, at the end of the day, what do you gain? So they rather they would rather allow him to leave. Okay. Mm. They, they've said extend your contract or leave. Is there anything they can put on that table that that will interest Mbappe? Is that to say? I I I actually do think that um, somehow there is this dissonance between the club and the yeah, player. And we've seen, and we've seen that the ambitions of the club and also also the top players. You look at it at, at the time we had Messi, Neymar. Mbappe, and Neymar. The trial, the expectations were high. They are going to win the Champions League and all that. All of those things, 
all of those expectations fall, fell flat eventually. So we are now looking at Mbappe with all of the love he used to, you know, experience and having love lost between them now. I, I, I doubt, like Okwe has said, it's a bold call, but at this point in time, I cannot see how Mbappe will not leave. All right, <laughs> yeah. so uh, this, this young man that you're seeing on your screen mm. looks likely uh, to, um, everybody has agreed, is very hard to turn Real Madrid down. All right, let's talk about somebody who's painting Miami red, Lionel Messi. A lot of people have been talking about him from politicians to superstars, everybody welcoming Lionel Messi. And a lot of people have also yeah, said... And also making uh, someone cry. Someone... <laughs> 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 <Sense> of joy. <laughs> and also, mm. a lot of people have said, this is a good time to go to Miami because the expectations are not high. Mm. Messi just being there is enough for a lot of people. But, but, but okay, I, mean, I mean, we are concerned about football here. A lot of people are concerned about other things. From a footballing perspective, what, 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 what's there to do in Miami? Yes, uh, you have a team on uh, a losing streak. Yep. And again, uh, that is just the, you know, uh, Messi is winning sort of power that Mbappe also wants to win by exactly. having coaches, appointing mm. coaches for your team. And Messi just did that with uh, Inter Miami. Mm. Mm. He posted uh, Tata Martino. Tata, Martino then, yeah. You know, Martino was <laughs> in Barcelona. He ended two of <laughs> He was with the Argentine national mm. team. So he has now gone to Messi's final destination. So now, the comfort there, the comfort is there for him in Miami. Mean, so yeah. he's settled and uh, we can actually he's see enjoying the best. Himself. Yes. Mm. You can actually see the best of Messi, Messi. Uh, there in the uh, MLS. MLS and yeah. a, again, you know, the Americans they play they place much value mm. on entertainment than the sport the sporting aspect, and that's so, why they don't have regulation in their leagues, and that's why you have all this kind of funny uh, draft. So for Messi, there is no pressure of whether you are going on regulation or not, so he's there to just deliver the entertaining value and also improve the sport in the, in the United States. Let's look at the, the commercial side of it. Um, the annual TV deal for MLS has shot up from $8 million to $250 um, dollars, mm -hmm. uh, million. Dollars. The annual franchise value has shot up from $37 million to $579 million. Now you are having attendance shoot up from 15000 to 21000 at the stadium. <laughs> All right, guys, we, we, we have to leave football. We're mm -hmm. pressed for time, but we have to. There's this ongoing drama. Let's talk about the, the battle that the IOC has to, to remain a political. I, I mean, I don't know if it's the right word to use. To, to remain neutral. Mm. Even though they are dragged into all of these issues, now the IOC is receiving a lot of flack for not outrightly banning Belarus and Russia. And, and, and Thomas Bach, the IOC president, his explanation is you, you shouldn't make athletes suffer for the sins committed by their country or some elements in um, their country. And, and, and first, let me just ask Okwe, the, the IOC is receiving a lot of flack. We're going to listen to the IOC yeah. president in, in, in a bit. But do you think they, 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 they've come out of this? Because the pressure is on them because of the Olympics. Yeah. And the way it stands, it doesn't look like the IOC well, is going to stop. Watch, yeah. You know, their flags will not be there. You, you can call them federation or not. Yeah. But in, in, in some people, whether yeah. you call it federation or not, it's still, they will say it's still Russia. Yeah, winning. definitely. It's a conundrum, really. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, there is a thin line between reasoning and treason. Now, we were in this kind of situation in 96, and uh, our football never recovered from that uh, <laughs> self-inflicted mm. attack from the General Bachelor administration, mm. where uh, they were like the, a pariah nation, and it was affecting our sportsmen. That's why we had to pull out from South Africa in 96. Now, uh, should the athlete actually pay for the sins of uh, the politicians? Now, uh, bring it back home, uh, talking about different palliative was uh, we have people already getting like 70 billion. So mm. if something happens, should the masses actually pay? Because uh, these athletes don't get pension. It's not a pensionable job. So mm. it's what they get now from their sponsors. When they are active. Yes. Meanwhile, uh, the president, the Belarusian president, President Putin, they will get pension. So come what worst case scenario, the 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 grass that will suffer will be the athletes. So I don't I don't think it's fair. I think you can't uh, strip them of the honor of uh, their country flag, but I think they the athletes should be there. Anthem, it's just they, moral and it's fair. They should be there. But as far as Ukraine is concerned, mm. 
if you allow Belarus and Russia, they don't want to come to the Olympics. Sports and politics always will mix, but I think that the authorities, the as much as possible, the we, we I feel that they need as much as possible to, you know, exercise um, proper discretion in ensuring as much as possible the careers of athletes are not affected. You saw um, at the Wimbledon where even Zvitolina was even saying she is not going to shake. Yeah. So it's beginning to affect relationships between, to, yeah. between athletes. And f sports is not about, you know, um, uh, diplomatic ties, sports, yeah. uh, bilateral relations or whatever. It's, it's usually about the camaraderie. The fact that we are trying to, Split you know, sportsmanship. we want to inspire generations. If we start talking about all of, you know, uh, political uh, disputes and all that, sports will not necessarily try. We know that um, athletes actually use their own platforms to speak up, to advocate. But as much as possible, the authorities owe it to the athletes to protect them away from all of these political shenanigans as much as possible. All right. Right. Uh, yeah, we, we lost a generation because mm. of South Africa appetite policy in 76. Exactly. So mm. what happens to those people? The politicians yeah. still got paid. Exactly. But the athlete, they can't be the... <laughs> the pump. Mm. All right, uh, it, it does appear uh, my partners in the studio agree with the IOC that look, the athletes should not suffer. All right, um, I mean, there's a lot to dissect, uh, hopefully, when we have time. All right, our parting shot on the show this afternoon will be um, Jim will smile now, Hungarian Grand Prix. <laughs> uh, our parting shot, Lewis Hamilton. He's had a bad season so far, but he's on pole uh, for uh, this race. Uh, Jimmy, before we go, one of our polls. The, the, the race the, is in less than an hour. Exactly. And Do you see him coming out on top? It's a commanding position to be on pole, but Max Verstappen has been in good form. Ma Max has been massive, you know, and I think that um, Lewis Hamilton himself has been hungry, especially in Hungary. So I think um, it will go his way, especially because the Hungary is a place where it's actually very difficult to overtake. And I see that the dominance of Lewis Hamilton is similar to the dominance of um, Nadal on clay at <laughs> Roland Garros. Mm. Uh, this pole performer is more of I'm still here performance. Yeah, exactly. Nobody talks about Lewis Hamilton anymore, mm. except when before human rights uh, activities mm -hmm. or equal rights uh, criterion society. But mm. when he talks about this fraud that actually brought him to limelight, mm. he, he has been forgotten. After the Are you unfortunate... Sure he has, are you sure he has been forgotten? Or let's say it's a fading force. In, uh, he, 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 almost he forgot has, it because even Alonso, Alonso came back fully. Yes, this particular year. So how can he be right? After the issue mm. with uh, Verstappen that season, uh, when in 2022 uh, it was a very it forgettable close, season. It wasn't close. It wasn't close it was, mm. uh, So I think uh, coming back and uh, making a statement of intent on the Hungarian uh, track really is massive track, for him. Uh, of nine uh, polls, which has never happened before, should give him that confidence. Yeah, it might never not. It might not get anywhere this season, but I think this race. Is, uh, we should watch out for him. 595 days. I, I want you guys, before, I, you know, I want you guys to leave this on the table. Mm. Winning here, is it a statement? Because that's what you seem to say. Exactly. Be is it a statement that, look, watch out for me next season, I'm still here, I'm not a fading force? Is that what you're saying? I think this season is done already. Mm -hmm. Max will get this season. But I, I also feel it's more important for him because of his contract situation and messages. Um, Toto Wolf has got to give him the contract right now. Mm -hmm. Statement of intent, like Opoe did say. And I think it's very important for him to continue to replicate this kind of performances, or else it will be very hard for him to secure his uh, seat for next season. Okay, form so... Form is more of a form is temporary, class okay, is permanent. permanent. Mm. So uh, on form now, he cannot get anywhere this season. But just like showing your class, yes, I have this class, I can't go away, just like what Messi did. All right. Uh, since we've not been told to go out of the studio, maybe we'll just throw this in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've been told we have to go. I just have to bait uh, my, my, my producer, but uh, he says we have to go. Uh, Jimmy, I want to thank you for your time yeah, on my the pleasure show to be today. With you. Yeah, and for me mm. as well. Um, we, we have to stop meeting like this. We, we, we really have to stop. Mm. That. <laughs> we talk about that backstage. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for allowing us to be a part of your day. We hope that you enjoyed this. We'll be back again next week. I'm Yemi Adabari. Bye-bye now.